It's time for an ornamental pheasant tree tour. It's been a while actually since we did a pheasantry tour and a few things have changed and we've got a few additions so I wanted to go through kind of the different pens, the breeding and I know a lot of you are really keen about when we've got eggs available so that's what we're going to do today. So I guess the first major change actually is that this side is now all our birds of prey. We did have pheasants in here and the next one along but now we have um, little Yassine, the barn owl in there. And now the pheasants are in this side um, and also across in the field. So the first two runs we have are our well-renowned Reeves pheasants. Now these guys are always a bit difficult to get shots of because they come right up to the mesh. Um, so we've got a pair in here. This is our original pair. We've got the boy and the hen is back there somewhere. If it's gonna, are you gonna focus on her? There, there she is. And then next door we have an unrelated pair and look, look at his tail. This guy's tail is ridiculous. So we have him and then we have, again, we have an unrelated hen over at the back somewhere. If again, it will focus, there she is. These guys have been a bit funny this year um, in terms of egg laying. They took ages to get going and they haven't been that consistent. Um, so although we've got some eggs in the incubator at the moment, they actually haven't hatched yet. So I was hoping that we would have had loads of these eggs on our website for sale, but they just, they haven't had the consistency. They started the season with like one egg and then a week passing and then another egg. And of course, when I'm shipping eggs, that's no good because fertility starts to drop off after 12 days. So you want to get at least six eggs within 12 days. Um, so they're all going to have a decent fertility. That wasn't happening with these. So they, I mean, they're fine in their health. They're happy and they are starting to lay. Um, she had a couple of eggs this morning in that box. Saad might have collected them already. So we'll see. We're, we're going to see what's happening with these guys. They haven't changed their enclosures, though. Their enclosures are still 6 foot by 15 foot. Perfectly happy. And then you can see that this guy's really happy because he's got... He's grown out that ridiculously long tail. I should also mention that this guy has got a really big issue at the moment with scaly foot. We're treating it every other day just by using petroleum jelly and slapping it on and, and basically um suffocating the mites and it's working but it does take a while for the feet to recover so don't if you do get that on your birds don't stress it happens to all of us um but just treat it by e45 petroleum jelly anything like that anything that will basically soften up the scales and suffocate the mites that are living there. Next to the reeves, we have our pair of peacock pheasants, grey peacock pheasants. There's the male back there. Now these guys are the only ones that haven't destroyed all of the vegetation. So originally all three of these runs were planted up with greens, but the reeves just destroyed them. The grey peacocks have been quite delicate and they've allowed stuff to grow, which I like. I like to see a planted aviary. You might remember the last year we had an absolute drama with these guys. And when we first got them, the male actually, I think he was confused and he almost killed the female. We found her in the morning, pushed down one of the corners with basically her head caved in. Um, we managed to, we sort of rescued her and rehabilitated her over the course of two or three months. 
And then we finally made the decision to try and get them back together and it worked. And I think it was just maybe him being young and not understanding that she was a female and he didn't need to protect himself from her. Um, so they have bred this year, which is super exciting. The hens only lay clutches of one or two eggs and they only lay about three or four clutches if you're super lucky in a season. Now we weren't sure quite what would happen with this because this is their first breeding season and we were right, the first two clutches were infertile. However, very excitingly, her third clutch, which is two eggs, is fertile. It's in the incubator, they're developing, they haven't hatched, um, so it's all fingers crossed that we're going to actually get something. But it's good to know that they are actually fertile and producing good eggs. And then on the end of this run of three, we have a little extra coop that we bought, which has currently got our silver pheasant boy in. You saw him there just having a bit of display. Now this too has not been without its dramas. So we bought him last year at the Melton Mowbray auction and we also bought two hens. And when we went to collect them, somebody had cut open the cable ties in the cage and stolen the hens. We luckily, we did get our money back, um, but it meant that we just had this one boy for ages on his own. And this was a bachelor coop, so we had we had, um, oh, I'm going to close this door in case they go a bit crazy. But now it's no longer a bachelor pen because we do have this silver hen. She's a bit of an old girl and as you can see, she's rather uh, scruffy. She's in mid molt. She also, when um, we got her, she already had a broken toe and she's got that kind of weird underbite on her beak. But she's a prolific layer. So she's on loan from a farm park. Uh, and we've had her in quarantine, she's started to molt, she's started to get loads of pin feathers through, so whether she lays any eggs is, remains to be seen. But she's a prolific layer at her other home, but their male cock doesn't actually fertilise the eggs. So she's come here to see if we can get some fertile eggs out of them, and also to get her in a decent shape after she's molted out, so she looks lovely. So that's it for those four run of Avery's, but we have more. So we have expanded into the um, field. I'm just going <laughs> to... Hello? Should you be here? Not really. Come on. Back you go. They're obsessed with trying to come through here. They have all of that grace, but they want to come through here. So anyway, so we have expanded the pheasant tree into the field over here. So let's take a little walk through. So here's our lovely ovaries. And then come this way. And then we'll go down here. And then we have another three Avery's here. So Saad actually picked up this coop for 50 quid, which I thought was brilliant. We bought some netting for the top because it wasn't netted. Um, it's also netted on the bottom. And we must, before, you know, before it, something bad happens and we say, I told you so, we must get some electric wire to basically put in these. And then you create a barrier around the whole top so if Mr Fox tries to jump up they get shocked and they can't get onto the top because they could break through that quite easily so we do need to get that electric fencing sorted but basically out here we have Goldens, Lady Armhurst and Temnix Tragopans over the other side. I really love having these guys out on grass and they do stamp quite a bit of it down but you can see that actually where we put the twigs it kind of grows up underneath now this is our pair of goldens and I know some of you have been crazy wanting the um, golden eggs but this is a new hen and we've had a couple of difficulties so she is laying 
but we've been incubating them and they seem to get to like day 12 or day 13 and then die. So obviously I'm not going to sell you guys any hatching eggs of birds unless I know they're completely viable. Um, so with any luck, we've got a load more in the incubator at the moment. It maybe it was just her early eggs that that happened to. So we've got a load more eggs that so hopefully they will come out. But they, he's really pretty. I honestly think with Goldens, it seems crazy that they're one of the cheapest and e most easily uh, to keep birds in the trade. But I think they're one of the most stunning, to be honest. And then next door, we have a pair of Lady Amherst. Um, again, this boy has not molted. So there's the hen. The boy has not molted out into adult colours. He's just starting. He's starting to get his his uh, his crest and he's hiding, so you guys can't see him. Why are you doing it? Can you come out? Maybe if I move down here a little bit, he'll come up that corner. We'll wait for him to come out. But basically, they can still create fertile eggs even when they're not in their full adult plumage. Um, but she hasn't laid any eggs. I think they're both still quite young, so we haven't had any eggs from them. Now these pheasants, they don't tend to sleep in hutches, even when bad weather. So they both have like little hutches that they can lay their eggs in, they can get out of the weather, but they actually roost on these um, perches. I would say as a recommendation, don't put your perches along the edges because they'll roost on them and then if there's predators they'll come and stick their claws or their beaks or their talons through. So we've got obviously their um, perch is in the middle and then their perch is in the middle too. So that's this is a nine foot by I think this is a nine by nine um, so each one it's a nine by nine and then we have one bigger enclosure which is our Temnix Tragopans. Again I really love this enclosure with how the grass is growing up around the stumps of the perches and things that we put in. They have a little platform over the back which has a nest box underneath um, but she has been laying again, but she hasn't been laying in the nest box. Once again, this is a brand new young pair, and so he is not yet molted into full colours. And it does seem that her eggs are not fertile. Um, they're really difficult to candle because they're a dark chocolate brown colour, um, but they do look clear, which is, um, is kind of to be expected. Um, you can see there on the top that fiery red colour. Um, fiery orangey red colour, that will become his entire body uh, as he molts out. And he te they spend a lot of time under that bit. The hen, though, often hides down here. Here she is. She's in this long patch of grass. And then she's going to run off down there. But I really love these pens. I love how we're basically we've given them as a natural environment as possible and then over the season of course this grass is going to keep growing higher and higher and higher and I hope in the future that when they do actually incubate and sit on their own eggs they'll then hatch out babies and the babies will be totally secure running around in the long grass which is really, really cute and really fab. So I'm really happy with how our pheasantry is progressing. And I will let you guys know when the chicks start to hatch. And if you are on the waiting list for eggs, I apologize, but I don't want to send eggs out until I fully know that they have the best chances of hatch possible. And if you can't get enough of the pheasants, then you must watch this video when we set about preparing their nests.